Who needs sleep anyway? Oh, hello, folks. For I'm the one, the only I am Hobo Tom. And I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. You know, tonight, well, at least tonight, it's a Wednesday night. So you know what that means? It means AEW. Wow, I've already done four wrestling shows this week. One more to go. Remember, I did do the Ring of Honor. Little random wrestling, random wrestling show. Monday, Monday Night Raw, my live stream for Impact. Today's AEW. I'm off tomorrow. It's going to feel so good. Friday, I come back with SmackDown. Then I have the week, then I have all Saturday off. So that will definitely be interesting. So I'm here to talk about some AEW, but before I do that, I have to mention two people. Miho Abe Cream Pie. Yep, that's right. You, sir, you just, you always seem to win, but yet you always win with that six count. Again, who needs sleep? Sleep's overrated. And then Alexa Bliss Fan 69. You are a member, definitely a master of the air guitar.
And also, I have the final tally. I've calculated. El... Or Iho del Hobo El Vagabundo's totals. Eight and a half out of nine matches correct. What matches did I get wrong? That one, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, what match did I get wrong? The only match I got wrong was the Karate Man versus Ethan Page. Whoa. Huh. You know what that means? Actually, the one was the Stone Cold Lock. I picked that one right. What was the match of the night? Hmm. Because it wasn't that match. That was kind of meh. Snooze match was actually pretty good. So yeah. Oh, match of the night was. Betty, yeah, yeah, that's not right. Eight and a half it is. Good old, good old El Vagabundo over there. He was in the head of one Paul Levesque. With that being said, I can finally get rid of that. And let's talk about some AEW. Wow, this start, show started off pretty quick. Um, it was minus one's birthday. We all know minus one. He's actually the son of the late great Brody Lee. So that was neat. There was a birthday cake set up. Um, Luther Serpentico and the Hybrid Two come out and spoil it. Match starts. So we have the Dark Order and Hangman Adam Page takes on Luther Serpentico, Jack Evans, and Angelico. This was actually, actually, it wasn't a bad match. Um, I think the whole thing is, I'm such a fan of Jack Evans. I might be getting a little, little shaded towards saying anything he does is good because he's such a good talker in the ring. Hangman and Page also has some great character work. And as we'll see more of later, or at least after this match, um, Luther, uh, he uses... <laughs> He used Jack Evans as a weapon during the match. It was a pretty good start to the match. Pretty slow. Um, in the Dark Order, they're trying to celebrate something. They spoil us. So of course, it starts off with a big brawl. You know someone's going to go head first into that cake. Uh, then eventually, Paige gets a hot tag in. It's a spine buster. That was awesome. Um, who did he hit that on, though? I forget. And Helica really didn't get much in this match. Or at least I don't remember seeing Helica do like any super... Major things in here. And then, of course, everyone into the pool. Once everyone goes into the pool, everyone has to get out of the pool. The Dark Order hold the ring. Paige does that moonsault to the outside that still looks great. Jack Evans, he hit a 450 splash. That that was so cool to see. Um, he goes to the outside. He gets pulled out by Hangman and Paige. He gets power bombed into the... To the front row of people. I guess the rest are so they can do that. Um, eventually there was a combination. Buckshot Lariat. And German Suplex. By Adam. By not Adam Silver. But um, John Silver. And Adam Page. The Dark Order and Page win. Join the Dark Order. Uh, Luther eventually winds up eating the cake. That was kind of funny. They ruined the cake. Serpenta gets held. He gets kendo stick by minus one. That was kind of funny. Um, also, it was a it was a solid match. They're doing a. I don't know. I wonder if the young bucks do miss going to AAA and CMLL because they they have a lot of, and New Japan. New Japan also does a lot of multi team matches. I wonder if the young bucks miss that because. I think every show on AEW, they have some some kind of greater than three-man tag match. Indeed. Eventually, they do have to have a trios championship somewhere. That That's... Uh, eventually, you have, the, you have uh, Triangular Di Muerta, Eddie Kingston, the Butcher of the Blade. You have the Dark Order. You have the Elite now. Or can you... Or you have the Bullet Club. 
Uh, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, the Good Brothers. Who else do you have? You have the Nightmare Family. Private Hardy Party. Um, top F Airwolf, I mean Top Flight. Could team up with anyone. Maybe Matt Sedol? I don't know. So, again, there's some po there's some possibilities there. Uh, again, uh, to end it, Serpente gets caned by minus one for ruining my birthday. He uh, minus one tried to do his best dad impression, the Vince McMahon impression. And this is a good match. This is a good setup. Cheeseburger match. And then John Silver tw tries to sweet talk Adam Page. Page is like, you know, I, I really don't want to say this. I mean, it's like he's, he's like he's a girl breaking up with someone. And you guys know that line. It's not you. It's me. It's always you. So, yes. Don't let that be a lie. Although Adam Page just walks with a bottle of booze. That's a pretty good way to, to walk out. Uh, then we have Jericho and NJF. They do an interview. Um, Tony Schiavone comes out, brings out Sting and Darby Allen. The uh, Taz shows up. Thank you, Taz. Sting lost something off his promos. You can't be surfer Sting. With the brooding crow face paint. It just doesn't work. Mainly because for old guys like me. I still remember surfer thing. Woo! New thing it was the crow. And. The first one was good. They tried to capitalize off the success of that. They tried the second one. And I think there's even like, like a third crow. Yeah, after the second one, it got kind of old. So, yeah, I don't know. Having a surfer sting trying to be NWO sting doesn't really work that well. Then we have the Elite and the Young Bucks. They're at Kenny's house. Kenny lives in an amazing, compl amazing looking townhouse. That looked awesome. Like, it's either a townhouse or it's freaking, yeah, it had to be a townhouse. But then there was the elevator. I'm like, only apartments have that. I don't know. Wherever it was, it looked absolutely gorgeous here in Florida. Yeah, not in Tennessee, by the way. Gee, I wonder if that's... I used to live up in Jacksonville. I could probably find that place on the map, but that's okay. That's neither here nor there. Um, Marvez gets... And the cameraman gets banished to the dungeon or the basement. <laughs> That was funny. Um, Don Cal tries to bribe the Young Bucks to stay away from, from Kenny. That's not going over that well. There was a terrible painting of Kenny Omega and Don Callis. Oh, wow. That was bad. Um, then we go to Peter Avalon. Taking on a uh, pretty Peter Avalon. Taking on Cody Rhodes. He's no longer the librarian. He's trying to do the Rick Rude gimmick. He's not Rick Rude, though. And I think his real name was Tom, was Tom Rude. It was spelled like, um, well, Tom's easy to spell. I think it was like R-H-U-D-E. It, it, was, it was something like that. Me Or R-H-O-O-D-E. Almost like Robert Rude, but, but a little bit different. I don't know. It was, it was phonetically... It, that was his, his real last name, Tom Rude, not Rick Rude. Again, just like like, like Rick Flair is Richard Fleer. Pretty close. Um, Cody Rhodes starts to smash off with a crossroads, trying to get it get it done over with quickly. Starts to kind of hang over Peter Avalon. Jade Cargill comes out, acts a distraction, and ouch! Cody got kicked right in the nuts for his for that distraction. Referee was confused. Cody was confused. Cody's future kids are going to be confused. Brandy's going to be confused when Cody goes home tonight. She's going to say, what the hell happened down there? You don't want to know, sweetie. 
So yeah, just bam, straight. Not, not even a Yano, just straight boot to nuts. That boot to ball sack, that hurt. Um, from there, Avalon actually took control of the match. He had a superplex on Cody. Um, Cody eventually told him, told him the spots. I always hate that. It's kind of my pet peeve whenever I see that. I'm like, eh. Whenever it's that obvious, you bend down far enough where, where your mouth can touch his ear, you know spots are being told. Then Cody gets stuck in the half crab. Um, Avalon's feeling himself. He goes for, he missed the moonsault though. Uh, Cody gets a cutter. And then he did his brother's power slam thing. That was, that was actually pretty cool. Cody then slapped on the figure four and kind of the whole thing of this match is that pretty Peter Avalon does not want to be slapped in the face. Almost, now that I think about it, almost like the dashing Cody Rhodes. Hmm. Indeed, Cody's getting rid of all his demons, I guess. Who knows? Um, so again, Cody had Peter Avalon in the figure four. Peter Avalon turned it over to reverse the pressure. For this whole match, every so often, Cody would show that his knee was hurting him. Yeah, Cody has to be more cognizant of that, I think. And the figure four goes on. Avalon tries to reverse the pressure. Does that for a little bit. Cody reverses it. Peter Avalon looks like he's going to try to slap Cody. Cody sits up, puts the big mitt up. Says, says what are you going to do? And Peter Avalon tapped out. He said, no, don't hit me in the face. Cody Rhodes wins. Yeah. It should have been much quicker than this. There's no reason why Peter Avalon should ever have a match of this length versus Cody Rhodes. It's a ham sandwich match. John Moxley comes out, um, cuts cuts a little promo, and then he faces on faces Nick Camarado. And actually, I was looking at it. Where is it? One, two, three. Fourth from the bottom, right there, next to the WWE Live picture. Well, you can't see that. It's kind of right there. I actually have his autograph. I got that when he was in NXT. I'm like, wait a second. Oh, wow. I didn't see him in NXT. It's good to see AEW hiring the unfortunates from NXT. At least they have a job, so I'm, they won't have to. I don't have to give them food stamps. But that's a whole other issue, though. And that's also my whole other job. Again, government jobs. God. Crazy, man. Um, so this was a pretty good match. Again, it, sh it showed um, Nick, because I can't even say his name that often. Very Bruiser Brody-ish. With the whole hair. Everything. Um, again, he hit that amazing neck breaker on John Moxley. That looked good. Again, very Bruiser Brody-like. Um, JR seemed to like it. It's like, yeah, this is a good throwback. Eventually, he just runs right into the turnbuckle. This where the tide turns. He actually gave John Moxley a pretty good fight. And I do like the fact that John Moxley is willing to at least work with, if not put over, other talents. That's good. He's cooperative. He's a good worker. He is a good hand. Um, in WWE, he... he, he I don't, um, I don't know if those ever knocked on him, though. He always tried to do what he wanted to do. Maybe they wouldn't let him put over other people. Who knows? They're weird like that over, over in WWE land. Or in the prison known as Stanford. <laughs> or the asylum known as Jacksonville. <laughs> that, was, that was a good shot, though. From Impact last night. Uh, eventually, Moxley hits an assisted uh, German suplex. Because he couldn't get the straight suplex. Nick's too big for him. Uh, Moxley then, he puts him in the sleeper hold. Legit sleeper. Looks like the sleeper, not the rear naked choke. At least they called it the sleeper too. He puts Nick to sleep. It was an okay match. Nick, even though he got his his moves in, he looks strong. You know he wasn't going to win. He's not going to beat John Moxley when John Moxley's coming back. Kind of predictable. Ham sandwich of a match. Then Moxley takes the mic. He calls in the bullock. He calls Kenny Omega, Doc Gallows, and Carl Anderson the Bullet Club. Straight up, 
calls him the Bullet Club. He might as well have gone Bullet Club for life. I can't do this because that's because that's uh, Finn Balor's thing. So I'll just go under the jaw shot. Um, see, so then there was Dasha talking to Eddie Kingston. Uh, Jake the Snake and Lance Archer come out. Jake's Jake got a haircut. Jake the Snake's just getting old. Uh, Kenny Omega's on the beach. Then he's enjoying the beautiful beaches of Jacksonville. That had to be taped earlier, I think. Or, yeah, that was a, I don't know. I was remember, like, he's at the beach. That's okay. And the, the beach isn't, I think it's literally like 10 minutes away, like 10 minutes away from the stadium. Not really that far away. Maybe 15 if you count traffic and stuff, but, oh well, close enough. Then we have the Matt Hardy and Private Party take on Top Flight and Matt Siddell. This is good, because they, because Tony, at every chance he could, he mentioned that, Private Party, they are number one contenders for the Impact Tag Team Belts. Again, next week in Impact's go, Impact's doing amazing stuff. I don't care what people say about Impact. They finally figured out who they were. Oh, there's my cat. Oh, there she goes. It's kind of stretching a little bit. Uh, Impact fig, finally figured out who they are. They've realized that they have to work with other promotions. And when you work with another promotion, instead of like burying people like the Young Bucks, like Okada, good things can happen. There can be collaboration. You can have back and forth. Between the two of them, they might topple WWE and say, hey, this is a real, almost territory-like wrestling event. You know you're going to see people from other shows showing up. Maybe some people you know, some people you don't know. Okada could show up to an AEW event. Who knows? You can, you can have Los Ingobernales de Japan show up to Impact Wrestling. I know Impact's done a little work with CMLL and AAA a little bit. So again, they're not burying people like they used to with New Japan, so that's good. The Impact also used to have a decent relationship with Ring of Honor. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, so for this, again, very fast-paced match. This was good. Private Party hit their double tag team moves. Top Flight, oh, that one guy, he hit that amazing drop kick. Though that looked... <coughs> it was a regular drop kick, but he seemed to get so much elevation just by standing. Private Party, though, they're, I think with Matt Hardy, he's finally teaching them how to become a heel tag team. Even though they would do fast moves, they knew when to slow the pace down. These very heel tactics, like the chin lock, the reverse chin lock to slow a match down. Being much more physical, a little bit more striking. Again, very much more heelish. Not as flippy, but they can still pull it off, though. That's a good thing. So now you have a heel team that's flippy. Good stuff. Uh, Sadell... The one thing I hate about Sadell is that he did do that double Huracron. It looks, jeez, fake. Super choreographed. That just doesn't look, that never look good. Um, didn't take away that much. There was no twist of fate by, by Matt Hardy for a while. Uh, he, instead, he gets sent over the rope. Top flight, they counted the silly string with the buck buck move, the thing the fabulous Rougeau's did. Again, throwbacks to the fabulous Rougeau's team that I remember watching. And Matt Hardy eventually hits a side effect on everyone. Quinn does it some dancing in Zaguri. And Top Flight, good work off the top. However, Private Party is a little bit better. Um, they use the chair. Very heel tactic. And then the shooting star press. The chair knocked the one guy from Top Flight down. Then eventually the shooting star press to finish him off. I like this. They're using a Big impact move like a shooting star press. Just not for a spot, but it's a finisher. In addition with a chair shot, that actually works. Uh, Matt Hardy and the private party win as well they should. I'll tell you what, I was, this was actually a good match. I'll, it was a surf and turf match, I think. And then with Private Party, Matt Siddell says, Hey, what are you guys doing using the chair? 
and Matt Hardy just twists the fates to everyone. So that was good to see. Then we have Layla Hirsch taking on Penelope Ford. Penelope Ford has to work on her wrestling a little bit. Layla Hirsch is amazing. I'm going to give this match what I give it only because Layla Hirsch has classic collegiate wrestling mat, mat wrestling. And this, like, looks legit. You grab a person by the waist, you go for the front, front trip, you turn them over, you try and pin them. Very classic stuff. If you watched any NCAA tournament, the style of her wrestling is the style you would see. If you watch any Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tournament, you'd see the same thing. Layla Hirsch has really good potential. She... I, I don't want to say this as a knock, but she could be AEW's version of either the WWE's Ronda Rousey or Shayna Baszler. You know, if I'm mentioning you with the names of Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler, you can't be bad. Penelope Ford, however, is neither of those women. Penelope Ford is more on, more on the, the Lana level. Yes. Oh, let's see here. What was I not for my rant? Um, and Charles the Butler, he's told to trip her up. That's kind of funny. Layla instead hits the Gigi Katami. Again, you're going to throw in real legit moves like that. I'll always mark out for it. Uh, and that was... <laughs> Ford doesn't know how to kick people. That was such a weak kick on the outside. That was... I don't know. Now Layla eventually goes into the corner. Uh, Ford did hit her flippy back elbow thing very similar to Dana Brooke. Layla then deadlift. German suplex. That's amazing. She is like four foot eleven. She's jacked though. Well, she's not. She's like thick, like muscle thick though. And actually, she does look kind of cute too. She. She looks like a woman. She looks like a normal, average woman that you'd see on the street. Again, Layla Hirsch walks in to rack room shoes in her wrestling gear, and her jacket that says "Legit Layla." I'd be like, Miss, you're a little overdressed for this store. But yeah. Again, her work in the ring is amazing. Um, she she does a dive, eventually hits a dive off of Kip and Chuck. However, there's a little distraction there. Penelope Ford actually does pick up the win over Layla Hirsch. Meh. It was an okay. It was, it was a. It was a good match. That again, you're going to use certain moves. It's a cheeseburger match. Then Miro and Ch uh, Miro brings Charles into the ring because Chuck E. T. is his butler. He says, "Listen, I'm going to teach you something. You have to say bye bye to your best friend." Darn it! I was so close too. Yeah, we have the triple threat inner circle match. Um, Chris Jericho and MJF take on LAX and uh, Sam, Sammy and, 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 and Hagar. Wow, someone had to be desperate for, for that little joke there. And then, of course, they had Sammy Hagar show up and announce who his new favorite tag team is. Please. Um, starts off Chris Jericho and Sammy. That was actually a pretty good start. Kind of basic wrist locks, and then all of a sudden they start. Sammy Hagar's like, "I'm done with Mister being Mister Nice Guy. I'm throwing forearms." Uh, Sammy again. He he sends Chris Jericho out of the ring, hits the tranquilo pose, and catapults Chris Jericho into a Hagar big farm. That was good. Uh, Chris blind tags, blind tags himself out. LAX again. The, the LAX is so smooth at tag team wrestling. I understand why they left Impact, but man, when they left Impact, they left a big gap there. Even more so than um, KS, or is it no? MSK, Marijuana Smoking Kids. Terrible. Or something like that. I forget what exactly the letters, what order the letters are in, but it means that though. Terrible. Instead of being the Rascals, it's like Wes, Lee, and Des Bryant. I think it's Des. Yeah. But what it is whatever Paul Levesque wants it to be, though. That's all I can say about that. 
So with this, where was I now? After my rant already. Yep. Uh, Chris has multiple suplexes first. Again, the delayed vertical suplex is good. Then a snap suplex. He knows his stuff. Sammy, the top rope cutter. LAX, they just dive both ways onto people. It's just chaos. And the good thing is, both teams <laughs> went as far as they could without cheating until a little, a little bit later. MGF gets in. Uh, he eats a poison rana and then a top rope Spanish fly. Prettiest move of them all. Pretty, baby. Pretty, 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 pretty. Uh, MJF. Again, he hits a right hand from Hagar. Hagar does a double clothesline. Chris Jericho says, ah, a mood is about to change. He brings in a baseball bat. No, not happening. Um, gets Ortiz into a code breaker. Uh, then again, it's a spots all over. Sammy hits a senton, and that's an amazing senton, though, too, by the way. MJF tries to put the ring on. Jake Hager says, oh, catches him. He says, no, he put it off. He eats a couple of fists for his efforts. Is that a cheat for me? I don't know. Uh, again, spot fest, distractions. MJF gets the roll-up victory, holding the tights of Sammy Hagar. Chris Jericho and MJF win. I'll tell you what, this was a fun and entertaining match. It was good. Told a story. We'll see what happens next week with this. This was another surf and, uh, yeah, surf and turf match. Any match that has a, has a top rope Spanish fly has to be pretty good. And that was it. That was a fairly entertaining AEW the two hours seems to go fast. The segments in between the wrestling are sh are short, at least, to the point. The wrestling, for the most part's pretty good. Again, as long as they don't, they don't have too many women's matches, I think they figured out the their women's division formula. So that's always a good thing. And with that being said, it's time for me, me to go to the gym. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hopefully this video gets up tomorrow-ish. Um, I do have to do some editing. So I shall see everyone, I hope, tomorrow. And you'll see me again probably either Friday night or Saturday. And talk some Smackdown. Take care, everyone. Bye. So, what a weird... Freaking weird Friday. I don't know. I can't believe someone would actually want to hack an illegal wrestling stream. Oh! oh. Hello, folks. Welcome back. Yeah, and if you did not realize, this is this is part two. If I'm too sweet. Boom. Four things. Um, yep, yesterday was a weird day. So, this whole week's been weird. And... <laughs> Next week's going to be weird, and the week after, that's actually kind of normal. And then, whoa. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, so again, this is SmackDown. I missed most of SmackDown. I think I saw some recaps of the very start. Uh, it always SmackDown starts with recaps, as usual. And then Paul Heyman kind of winds up challenging Adam Pearce somehow to a match that's going to be the main event um again kind of a lot of nothing roman reigns was there paul heyman's there paul heyman's there so kind of like your basics i hate to say it but it's kind of your basic start to eh, your wrestling show um sammy Zayn also is protesting he's protesting um something against I don't know. He had his sign. And it seemed that throughout the entire show, it was kind of funny. He would do, like, shoot promos. He handcuffed himself to the rail. He had his little signs up. Sami Zayn, if you don't realize, this is the USA. Wait. USA. 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 You can protest, but sometimes bad things happen to protesters. I'll tell you this very quick story, and then I'll talk about the wrestling. 
when I lived in New York, I was so upset and dismayed because the Republic National Convention came to New York City. A bunch of people in November, was it November? Yeah, November-ish, decided to get naked to protest the Republican National Convention. I think the only thing is, is that there were no hot looking women protesting, which I guess was good. But yeah, so again, Sami Zayn protests really never work. And this leads into the first match. So we have Asuka and Charlotte taking on the Riot Squad. And with the Riot Squad, you have, you have Billy Vicious. Billy K, I guess, is there. Uh, Charlotte, uh, Charlotte and Asuka, uh, between the two, and they take control of the match with against Ruby Riot. For the most part, it's isolated. They take take control and really control the pace of the match with uh, when Ruby Riot was there. Uh, eventually, Ruby Riot gets, she just gets double team for the most part for the first part of the match. Billy Kay acts, acts as a distraction. Billy Kay, Billy Kay could be such a good announcer. She does. She definitely has the comedic timing. She has the voice for it. They really do need to learn to use Billy Kay better. Why they broke up the Iconics is still insane. Peyton Royce isn't doing anything. She's like barely even a sidekick to Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans thing is terrible and probably will always be terrible so yeah um i don't know why they why wwe does some things it seems like a good idea it's really not uh let's see here so again when billy k was the distraction Liv got in that was pretty good um she starts to take control of the match the kicks Kicks to the body of Charlotte. Asuka took actually the brunt of this match. And flying crossbody was always good. Again, it just... I don't know. Charlotte makes somewhat of a comeback. Uh, Ruby gets the blind tag then. The right squad double team Charlotte. Then there's the... Oh yeah, Michael Cole. <laughs> Got kicked into Morgan's live section. Oh wait, into into Liv's mid section. That was funny. It, it is always funny when there's a little bit of a screw up. And and Michael Cole's professional enough. He caught himself. He laughed it off. It was just that one funny thing. Uh, Oscar gets the blind tag. Oscar goes all Oscar again. Billy K acts as a distraction, but this time it actually distracts her team, which is not good. And that allows us, and then Ruby Riot's in the ring. She's distracted. Eventually, she eats a code breaker and a natural selection. Asuka and Charlotte retain the belt. You kind of knew this was going to happen, but still, it was actually a pretty good match. It was a pretty good match. It's so fun to see, <laughs> see Billy Kay. That was so funny. I'll give this a cheeseburger. This was a cheeseburger match. Then we see Bianca jumping rope um, with her hair as part of the training for her obstacle course, which harkens back to what they used to do in NXT. Then Liv and Ruby con confront poor Billy. It's not you, Billy. It's us. No! Don't lie to her. Don't sugarcoat it. Billy, you're out of here. That's what they have to say. No sugarcoating of stuff. Boo. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Baby. Do we need to do that, though? Shoot. I have to write down stuff tomorrow morning. I just realized that. And Daniel O'Brien comes out. Yes. 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 Uh, he's con uh, He's there. Cesaro comes out and says, Listen, we already had this match. That, uh, that was actually a really good match. Again, if it was 10 minutes longer, it would have been probably amazing. Again, it's a, it's a Brian Danielson take, taking on uh, Cesaro Castroneses from like Ring of Honor. That would have been pretty cool. 
Yeah, and check out my past Ring of Honor thing. Every so often, I will. I'm gonna have like the random wrestling show. Uh, that's probably gonna happen throughout the month of February. Uh, we'll see. It'll be like random wrestling show. Then let's see it with that. Sammy again. No one cares about Sammy thing. Uh, Dolphin shows up. So that was that was okay. And Sammy's just kind of funny throughout this whole thing. Uh, Dol uh, then our next match was Dolph Ziggler taking on Cesaro. Very technical start. You know what? When you start pulling amateur wrestling moves like the way these two are pulling them, I'll tell you what, it caught my attention. I was enjoying it. The only downside, I think I wasn't on WooTube. I was at uh, Watch Wrestling. It's just, I, I just miss, like, crap posting on WooTube about stuff. It's just more fun that way. You, it's, it at least gives you that feeling of interaction with people. If not, you're just, like, watching TV. Uh, a great, a great, great counter wrestling Cesaro. Dude, he hit that uppercut. That looked sweet. Did the very long swing. Uh, multiple covers by both. The, Dolph hit the zigzag. Didn't get the job done. Uh, put the sleeper hold on. And then I'll tell you what. Cesaro not to be outdone, outdone by AJ Styles, which I thought would be very hard to do. Just like a pop-up neutralizer. I don't even know how he did it. He just like literally popped him up, he popped him up, caught him, reversed him, gosh, neutralizer. That was really good. Again, I have no idea. Like Cesaro's freaking amazing. I tell you what, I saw that pop up neutralizer. You know what? Just based on that move alone and the fact that it is Cesaro, um, I cast, uh, King Castro knows it's pop up neutralizer makes me go. Whoa, this was a surf and turf match. You can't say that a lot about Dolph Ziggler matches either. So again, when I say that, that's actually something. Then it was Sasha Banks versus Reginald. Mm. Um, it was okay. I, I wanted to watch this match because I wanted to see what moves they were going to allow Reginald to do on Sasha Banks. For the most part, Reginald just kind of flips around. Carmella sits ringside getting drunk off champagne. Not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, and I'll tell you what, the Reginald, he, every time he went for a move, it would always be countered. And you know what? He looks familiar. Mainly the fact with his gymnastic abilities. And I forget his name, and I do not have his autograph, but there is the one guy in NXT, and you, the YouTube audience, can, can let me know about this. It was the one gymnast in NXT. He quit because I think he, he got like terrified because he had like one concussion, or he like tweaked something. He's like, no, no, I'm done with this. He's just gonna wrestle women and have women counter his moves. That's I guess that's okay. Hey, he's getting paid. Today's society, today's economic situation. You can never fault someone for getting paid. Um, Sasha then. Again, whenever the one guy would do something, she would counter it. Whenever she tried to do something, he would just kind of flip out of it. Again, a lot of counter wrestling. There was some weird botched bank statement. And I don't know if it's the original guy or if it's Sasha. But sometimes when Sasha does something, it just does not look good, though. Every so often, uh, Michael Cole. Oh, yeah, now Carmella has something to whine about. God. Dad jokes. Boo, Cole. Boo. So there was that. Um, nothing really happened. It was a ham sandwich. Then there was Roman Reigns and, and Paul Heyman backstage in the office. Roman Reigns is looking all comfy. Big, comfy executive chair. Even better than this nice chair that I'm in right now. But yeah, he's there. 
have a big overstuffed grandpa chair. Paul, go take care of your business. Yes, Mr. Reigns. But then there was a little recap about the Apollo Crews, Sammy Zane and Big E recap. Then the next match it was Big E taking on Apollo Crews. Uh, Big E, for the most part, controlled the match. That was really good to see. Um, Cruz eventually he got he he delivered the big boot standing moonsault. I don't care. So the standing moonsault is probably the most is the second most impressive standing move. Number one is Spanish fly. Oh, nothing. I have yet to see anything that will unseat a good standing Spanish fly. That standing moonsault though, that's a definitely the solid solid number two spot because anyone can jump on someone. That's easy. Do a backflip onto someone. Indeed. So so we'll see how they're going to see how they're going to do that. That's so good. Uh, Big E went for three Germans. No, only hit one. Uh, Cruz hit the Asai moonsault off of the apron. So they got to the they got to the floor. Um, Big E's lying on the ground. Paul Cruz jumps over him on top of the apron. Asai moonsault. Again. It makes you look at it like, holy, wow, he jumped all the way up onto the apron. The acai moonsault, Jeremy that's done off the ropes. That was great. Uh, Sammy then was smart, he took off the handcuffs. I don't know why, and then he attacked the Paul Cruz. And, and so that was weird. Um, and then he attacked Big E. So, what well, we got ourselves here, folks. We got to feel the true Dasta Finneth. Nobody wins. No one wins in a Dasta Finneth, baby. That ain't happening. Uh, this was actually a pretty good match. Again, you pull off moves like that, it's a cheeseburger match. Even with a screwy ending, still really good. And then Kevin Owens cuts a promo on his car. And uh, the Street Poppers, they, they bring like a wine and cheese basket for Boo, Silly DeVille. Boo, Boo, Boo. I refuse to cheer for Silly DeVille. Boo. She gets all the boos. Boo. No, boos, not booze. Boo. Boo. It's not booze. Boo, Sonya Deville. Yeah, they're trying to talk their way into getting a rematch. Um, then we, <laughs> then we have the NXT Classic, uh, the NXT Classic obstacle course. Um, they had to flip a tire, run, go over fences, like military style. Uh, fireman carry Chad Gable, or at least Bailey had a ch fireman carry Chad Gable. Uh, and then she had to make a basket. That was it. When it was Bianca's turn. No. They made it a little bit harder. They bring out the hurdles. I can never do a hurdle in my life. I, I like, would like kill myself on hurdles. I still don't to this day understand how people can like run and jump over hurdles like that. Uh, uh, not, not in my coordination set. I can do a moonsault. But I can't do hurdles. Um... And then <laughs> she had a farm carry Otis. Okay. I don't even know where Otis... Otis came from, like... I don't even know if he... I think it was, like, hiding under the ring the whole time. Now that I think about it. I forget where Otis came from. You see, Otis is like... Whoa. That's a big boy. It's one of them big boys. Uh, and then Bianca, like... Like, dunked. <laughs> the basketball. And then, of course, Bailey beat her up. Yeah, it was an okay segment. Then we had King Baron Corbin taking on Dominic Mysterio. Dominic was getting the pep talk from his dad before the match. Um, for the most part, Corbin's the bigger man. Dominic's the much quicker man. Very traditional wrestling match setup. Uh, Dominic had a great flying head scissors. His dad's taught him really well. Corbin, big punches. Oh, gut punch, gut punch, gut punch in the corner. Uh, Dominic. He had the basement drop kick. It was okay. Uh, tried to pull off a six one nine. That didn't happen though. I tossed out. Um, out on the outside of the ring, a little bit. He gets beat up. He goes back into the, to the ring. He's, I'll tell you what. He does. He sells the end of days by Baron Corbin. 
The Smash Show did absolutely nothing for either person. Except for maybe start possibly a feud between Dominic and his dad. That'll be interesting. Family feuds are always kind of fun. I actually haven't seen a good family feud, I think, since the Steiner Brothers. The Usos really never had a family feud. They were they were all, like, way too nice to each other. Um, this match was okay. It was a ham sandwich. Then we had Adam Pearce taking on Paul Heyman. Um... Yeah, all this really was. Uh, Roman Reigns showed up. Paul Heyman. Oh, I, I, I tweaked. Oh, my knee. Oh, my arm. No, he, he tweaked his knee going up the steps. It's like, oh, yeah, card subject to change. And, and Adam Pierce is like, oh, man. Uh, Pierce gets beat up. Then Owen shows up. A uh, Superman kick punch was countered. Was countered into a gut kick and then the stunner. Kill, Steen. Kill. And then the pop-up powerbomb through the table. And that's... And then Kevin... I guess Kevin Owens was told there was still like two minutes left. Hey, Kevin goes hog trash. Gets into Roman's face. This is what you want, big dog. I'm going to be ahead. I forget what he said, but he talked trash. And that was the end of the show, which actually ended by my count about two minutes early. Um, I, I wouldn't even call it a match. It was just a beatdown. And that was it. Again, a fairly entertaining of what I could see of it. Monday Night Smackdown. Um, next week, chaos. Let's, see, let's look at the big calendar. Let's look at the big black calendar over here, baby. See here. Um, this is going to be interesting. So I have my, my big filled out calendar here. Um, Sunday I'm off. I'm kind of happy about, well, Sunday I might be off. I don't know. I might do some work for that. Actually, sun, tomorrow I might make my predictions video now that I think about it. Now that I'm looking at this horrific schedule of mine. Um, it's only hope. Yeah. Actually, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Monday's going to be very typical. Um, Smackdown recap. I think the only bad thing is everyone just everything just starts late. So probably on Tuesday, Tuesday I'll only catch the second hour of Impact. I have to work today. We we had three people quit. You listen to me, folks. In fact, I'm going to show this to the whole universe. First, you must feel shame. Yes. Whoa. Good lighting. Teleworking makes morning so much easier. When I had, when oh, I had, no, we. There is hope for me, folks. Yes, yes, yes. I was like, you didn't care about your hair either today. The <laughs> supervisor, that's that's never a good sign. But yeah, let's see here. Um, I will talk to you. Cool. Indeed. Uh, let's see here. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Talking about work. It's time to shame people. You younger generation people out there, since I have some time to spare. Oh, I have to do that, too. What the hell did I do to my cell phone? There we go. Slowly figuring out stuff on my cell phone. But yeah. Listen, you young people out there. There's three ways you do not want to quit a job. Don't freaking text your, your letter. Also, if you're going to write, I'll, I'll kind of cover her name so she doesn't feel true shame. No, wait, what did I do? No, I'll go camera. I'll cover her, her name so she doesn't feel true shame. Yeah. Do not put your resignation letter on 
a sticky note. Very bad. I had to save that too. So yeah, don't put your resignation on a sticky note. That's bad. Don't text and don't and don't have your boyfriend say, "Oh yeah, she quit." That's lame. Be a man or a woman. Sit at home. Do what I've done in the past. You actually write out what you want to say, type it up, print it up, and just say, "Boss, I'm sorry." I have to go. Here's my letter of resignation. Nine times out of ten, it goes a lot smoother that way. Again, not a sticky note. Boo! Whatever. That's my rant and rave. Because, yeah, next week, I think with the exception of probably Friday. Friday, actually, yeah. Friday, I don't know. It all depends when the race ends. Oh, yeah, also, the following week, I have to make that schedule, too. Yeah, the following week, look for some race videos from this guy, Hobo Tom. And it'll give you a little insight into how the races go at Daytona Speedway. Uh, other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. 